You won't believe how easy this was to create in OBS. Custom transitions used to require editing software and hours of work, but now you can build them right in OBS. Transitions are animations that separate scenes in OBS, and the stock ones are cut and fade, but there are built-in luma wipes and stingers that you can build yourself. I spent years learning to build and perfect my own stinger transitions, but now anyone can easily do it right in OBS, totally free. I'm gonna show you how to do it all today. We've got a lot to get to, so let's get to it. I'm gonna show you how to create this simple transition in OBS. And once I'm finished, you're gonna understand how to create transitions like this in OBS. The only limit is your imagination, and don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the components of building the second one as well at the end of the video just to get you moving in the right direction. But let's start out with the basics of transition building. First, we need a couple of free plugins. The links are in the description down below so you can download them and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Let's install our plugins. So in order to install scene as a transition, what we're gonna do is, this is the page. We're gonna go to download right here and we're going to select the one we want. We have Linux, Mac OS, Windows installer zip, and just Windows zip. Now I find the Windows installer zip to be the easiest of the two Windows ones. And the Mac ones are fairly straightforward. You can follow basically the same steps I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna go ahead and click download. And then I'm gonna go into my download page and you can see we have a zip file. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that zip file and I'm gonna extract it. And then we're gonna go into the extracted file and we have an installer. I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on that. And I'm gonna click more info and run anyway. Then I'm gonna get an administrative prompt that you can't see, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click yes and install. And it's going to tell me that my OBS is already running. So I'm gonna have to shut down OBS, which of course is what I'm using to record this. But the rest of this is just to go ahead and click next throughout everything. And then it will be installed. The other plugin that we want to install is called the Move Transition. This is going to give us the ability to add all kinds of animations to our scene. And that one is right here. And it is the exact same process to download. You can see Linux, Mac, and Windows installer and zip. You just download it. You follow the same instructions as we did for the scene as a transition. And you're going to be all set. Easy enough. Now let's build our first transition in OBS. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create the scenes that I wanna transition from. So I've got a main scene here with just a camera, second scene with a display capture and a camera, really simple. So we're gonna create a third scene and build our transition. So I'm just gonna click the plus under scenes. We'll call this transition. And then what I'm gonna do is click the plus under sources and I'm gonna go ahead and create a color source and I'm just gonna call this blue and we'll select the color and click OK and I'm gonna create a second color source and I'm gonna call this one yellow and click OK and select our yellow color and there we go so now we have two color sources blue and a yellow and so what I want to do is square these off so I'm just gonna select the yellow one first and I'm gonna go ahead and just hold down the Alt key and just crop it up so it's roughly a square. And I'm gonna do the same with the blue. Just gonna hold down the Alt key and crop it up, make it roughly a square and there we go. So now what I can do is go down here and select, we'll start with blue, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to transform and edit transform and I'm just gonna rotate these 45 degrees like that and click close and so now we have our blue square rotated 45 degrees we're gonna go ahead and do the same with our yellow and transform and edit transform rotation 45 degrees close and there we go so now we have our two things now we can see our yellow one 
is not necessarily very square. I'm gonna go ahead and select here and then just uh, hold down the space bar and zoom out a little bit. So when I select these, I can kind of get a better idea of the shape. And we wanna go ahead and just hold down the thing and we'll crop it up to make it more square. Basically, we just want our corners to be parallel to one another. And this one looks pretty square. Uh, and then all we need to do is go ahead and make it big enough so it's gonna fill the whole screen. So there we go. That's the blue one. We'll just turn that off for a second. And we'll grab the yellow one, bring it over here, and we'll make that bigger too. So they're roughly the same size and all that stuff. So what we wanna do is got our yellow one right here and I want that to be a bit bigger I want to go ahead and expand this out and create our exterior border so when I hover over where the blue one would be you can see there's an outline there makes it pretty easy to do this so now if I turn the blue one on and you know if we move these over you're gonna see that we've got the yellow here and the blue here so that is pretty much exactly what we're looking for. Now we can center these for sure by selecting blue and going to transform and then center to screen. So we know that's perfectly centered and we'll select the yellow, right click and we'll go to transform and we can center it to the screen as well. So now both these are perfectly centered. Next, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bring a logo in here. So if you have a logo or you wanna use a logo, super easy to bring it in here. All you have to do is go and find it and we'll use the black alpha logo. Just drag it on there and it places it in there. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and right click on this, go to transform and we're going to center it to the screen. So now we've got our logo centered and everything looks exactly how it should look in the middle of our transition. So I wanna go ahead and adjust our logo here. I'm gonna select it, right click. I'm gonna to go to transform, edit transform, and I wanna just make the positional alignment to the center. And then what I'm gonna do is click close, right click on it, go into transform, and I wanna go ahead and center it to the screen. And there we go. And what that does is it makes it easy to add other effects like rotation and that sort of stuff. It's not going to matter for the transition we're creating now, but later on it will actually matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group them as selected. So now we have a group, the whole group is selected and we can easily move this. Pretty easy stuff. So what I'm going to do is add another small effect to it. You see we have our yellow right here and I'm gonna select our yellow and I'm gonna use a plugin that I didn't show you how to install but it's very easy, it installs just like the other two and it's called the Stroke Shadow and Glow and we're gonna add a stroke and click OK. We're just gonna do it on the yellow box but you could do it to any of the boxes if you wanted to and we want an inner stroke inner stroke there we go and we want to ignore the source bounding box and we're gonna go ahead and make this black and that's just gonna add that outline to the outside of our yellow box I like how that looks and I'm gonna go and select everything we're gonna bring this over here and I'm gonna add a little bit of an effect to our alpha here by going into filters we're gonna click the plus and then I'm gonna go to glow I'll put a link to this plugin in the description. It installs, like I said, just like the other two. And we want an outer glow. And we're going to select the color. Let's go with like an orangish color. Something like that. We're going to add it to the outside. And we're going to adjust the size of our little color flare there. And turn down the intensity a little. Close. There we go. So now we've got a little bit of a glow on our thing. We could add a drop shadow or something like that. Drop shadow might actually look better. We're going to filters. We'll, uh, we don't actually have to add a drop shadow in the traditional way. What we could do is just make it black. 
and there we go. Now we've got a bit of a drop shadow on there. It makes it really look like it's sticking to the background. All right, so now we can select our group. And what we're gonna do is go over here into our scenes. We're gonna right click here and we're gonna go to filters. We're gonna add some move filters here. So I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to move source. We'll call this group mid and click okay. And so what I'm gonna do is you can see the source is selected, it's group. It's the only source in here the way that the scene is gonna see it. And I'm gonna go to the transform and we're gonna get the transform. So that sets where this is. So then I wanna create another one and we're gonna call this one group start. And we'll go to move source, group start, and click okay. And I'm gonna make sure group start is selected, make sure our source is selected. I'm gonna move this off of the screen and then I'm gonna go down here to transform and click get transform. So now if I go ahead and move this group mid down, if I select group mid, you can see it moves it right on there. If I select group start, there you go. You can kind of get the idea of what we're going for here. So we're gonna go and click the plus and we're going to go ahead and add a move source We'll call this group end and click OK. And now all we have to do is go ahead and move this off of our screen like that. And we'll go ahead and get our transform. Now I just noticed something that could be affected. So we're going to go to our group start here. We just want to make sure we go off a little farther. And the reason why is because we have that little stroke on the beginning of it. And we just want to make sure that it's totally off the screen. So we're going to push it off the screen and we're going to get the transform. And so now we go to mid and we go to end and we're all set. So all we have to do now is string these together. So under group start, we're going to go down here and we're going to select our next move. And our next move is going to be the group mid. Then we can go to group mid and we're gonna scroll down here to our next move and it's going to be group end. So all we have to do now is click here, goes mid and then end. But you can see uh, something unexpected happens. When we click group start, it goes back to the start and then to the end. We can also see that our group end is a little lower than what it should be. So it's not going straight across the screen. So we're just gonna go ahead and move this up here and we're going to get our group end transform again. And let's try it again. And now it goes straight across. All right, cool. So we want at the end of our animation for everything to be on the left hand side. So the easiest way to do that is just to duplicate the group start and we're gonna call this reset. And then we're gonna go from group end, we're gonna go down here to our next move and we're going to select reset. So now when we start it, it automatically goes back and now it puts us in a big loop. So what we want to do is go to reset and we want to go ahead and select next move none. There we go. So now it goes back, but it's going back at the end of the string and we can still see it. So we're going to go into reset and we're going to scroll down here to visibility and we're going to set the visibility on reset to hide at the start of the movement. And then we're gonna go to group start and we're going to go to visibility and we're going to uh, select show at start of movement. So what it's gonna do when it starts the reset movement, it's going to hide our assets. And then when it goes to start group start movement, it's going to show our assets. 
So now it should run through the list and reset without us seeing it go back across. And there we go. So basically that's, that's our transition. That's exactly what we were looking for. Now we can tweak this a bit by going and selecting our ease in and ease out. We can adjust the time as well. So let's say we want it to linger a little bit on the mid. We want it to stay centered on the screen a little longer. We can up this from 300 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds, essentially a half of a second. And now when we play it, you'll notice that it lingers in the center a little bit longer. And we can make that even more pronounced. We can go with 800 and then you'll see it lingers a lot more in the center. And it also comes in kind of slow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to group start and we don't want it to ease in and ease out. I think we're gonna select ease in and let's see what we get with that. All right, and let's see what we get with ease out. Yeah, I like that a bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is go to the end and I'm gonna ease that in. Let's see what we get there. There we go, it kind of slows down coming on screen, holds up for a second, zips out real fast. Total, we've got 300 milliseconds and then we have 800 milliseconds and we have 300. So we've got 1400 milliseconds is the grand total of this transition. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to transitions and we're gonna click this plus right here and we're going to go to scene and it's a scene transition. We don't really need to change the name if we don't want to. Click OK. What we're going to do is put our duration in here, which is 1400 milliseconds. And then what we need to do is select which scene we're going to use as a transition. In this case, we're going to use the transition scene as our transition. And we know the duration is 1400 milliseconds. Here we can set where our transition point happens. And in this case, we're fine because we're going with percentage and it's going to go at 50%. But you can go with the duration. So if the beginning of your transition is shorter than the end, you can do it at time and select how many milliseconds you want before it changes your background scenes. In this case, percentage is just fine. If it changes over our scenes at halfway, we're good to go. Audio style. Generally speaking, you want this to be crossfade. What that means is it's going to continue your audio from one scene to another instead of cutting your audio when the scene cuts. And why this is important is if you're using the same microphone in one scene as the next, you want that audio to be carried seamlessly across from one scene to the next, and that is what a crossfade will do. Next and last, we need to select the filter that is going to be triggered for the transition. So we go in here and we know that group start is what triggers our transition. Now we can preview it and we just wanna make sure that B comes on before we can see it again. And, and everything is looking perfect. It's exactly what we want. So we can click okay. Now we can test it out. And there we go. Looks fantastic. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. And that is how to create a very basic transition right in OBS. Now I simplified this in a lot of important ways. One, when we go into the transition, you can see that I grouped everything together so that it will work. We can just transform the group instead of each individual thing. So I'm not having to put the location and position of our logo and our blue background and our yellow background. We put them all in a group and we can move them all together. You may have transitions later where you don't want them grouped because you wanna move each individual element separately. That sort of thing is going to create a much more complex and interesting transition. It's all possible. I'll show you a little bit about how that's done in the next piece. Now let me show you a breakdown of how this other transition was created. And don't forget, if you had trouble following or have a question about the process, why not drop by my live streams? It's on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
where I answer your questions live. Now this transition here is a bit more complicated as you can imagine. So we'll go over here into transition two and you can see the elements are essentially the same. We're using the same blue, we're using the same logo and yellow and we just have a media source that is a little bit different it's just a video source so let me show you what I'm talking about we're gonna right click and we're gonna go into our filters for this so you can see how this works so we have our yellow card and our blue card starting positions and we start by moving our yellow card over here then we move the blue card on top of it so basically how this is working is our yellow card and our blue card start on opposite sides we move our yellow card on top and then right here you see this background one and the background is the video uh, so it's just called media source and what we're doing is we're just turning on the visibility of that media source in here so if I go to our media source right here visibility show at the start of movement so we've got the yellow one and the blue one has their set location the yellow one moves on top and then we can turn on the background because it's underneath the yellow one so we don't see it turning on then we move the blue one on top of that as you'll see right here blue comes on and then we go ahead and make the logo visible as you'll see right here so right here show at the start of movement so the blue comes on and there's no logo but we activate our logo to make it visible that way next we move the yellow which exposes the background video and we can see the background video when the yellow moves off then we move the blue which exposes our logo and here is the tricky part I actually do a bit of a 360 on our logo so the logo starts out regular and all you have to do to do a 360 in it is go ahead and go to transform and just add 360 degrees of rotation and then go ahead and get your transform and that's what adds that 360 of rotation and then in background 2 and logo 2 all they are doing is going off the screen at the same time and then we have our resets so we're resetting yellow so it moves back over here we're resetting blue so it moves back over here and we are using the visibility so that we don't actually see those aspects of it so there you go we also are using visibility tricks for the logo to bring it in and take it out so we don't see that but really it's all of the same things that we did in the basic one the only difference is we're not moving them as a group we're moving them individually and then we're just lining them up in a big string like this now the other different setting that I used in this that I didn't use in the original is at the very end you notice that our background video and our logo go down at the same time but since they're not physically connected in a group how do we do that well those ha those moves happen right here so if we go to our background and we scroll down here instead of setting the next move action we set a simultaneous move so we want to do the background two at the same time as we do the logo three and then if we go to logo three you're gonna see that we've got the exact same thing we've got simultaneous with background two now we have to put yellow reset as the next move and we do that on both both of these because both of these moves are happening in this simultaneous mode so there we go that's how we get both of those things moving off the screen at the exact same time at the end of the transition pretty simple basically using the exact same thing I showed you in the simple one just to create something with a lot more individual movement and it works absolutely fantastic this probably seems like a lot and there is a bunch of trial and error to get everything just right there's no question about that 
But once you get the basics down, you can create some absolutely amazing transitions right in OBS. Now, anything can be used in a transition, images, videos, and of course, just color sources like I showed here. And you can use any filter as well. So you can use masks and pretty much anything else that you can think of. It makes the limits of what you can actually do pretty much unlimited. It's awesome. What sort of transitions are you gonna create? Let me know in the comments. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. If you wanna see how to build a custom transition the old fashioned way using free video editing software, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.